There is a massive tsunami coming, and virtually nobody is seeing it. When it hits, people are going to be caught totally by surprise. It's going to hit the east coast of the United States and the west coast of the United States at the exact same time. And when people finally emerge, those who survive, from wherever they were hiding, in the aftermath, they are going to look around and not recognize the world. It's going to be a completely different place. Now, real quick, battlefield of the mind. Florida Maki, what are you talking about? Oh, believe me, it is nothing short of a tsunami. For those of you who have been with the Florida Maki Patreon channel for any amount of time, you know exactly what I'm already talking about. Because we've talked about it before. For those of you who'd like to get read in, join us at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. It's only a dollar. Believe me, it'll be the best single dollar you can spend right now with what's going on in the world. And fully refundable dollar. First 90 days, no questions asked. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. Believe me, Battlefield of the Mind is going to be the only battlefield going forward if you want to survive. Now, I'm sure the vast majority of you have heard and been talking about the political earthquake of earlier this morning. It was just last weekend we had somebody taking a shot at a former president, and now the current one has decided finally to relent and give his full support for the next four years to his vice president, Kamala Harris. What nobody is seeing is the tsunami that is coming. Up until now, former President Trump has been running virtually unopposed because everybody knew that Biden was incapable of while well, truly even doing his job, much less trying to um, eloquate why he should get four more years. Everybody has seen this and known it was coming, but make no mistake now, the tsunami of money that is going to roll in to support Kamala Harris is going to be breathtaking. If you think the amount of money that Elon Musk gave to Mr. Trump was a lot. Just wait. Just wait. There are forces all around the globe that would love nothing more than to see Kamala Harris ascend the presidency. What has been Donald Trump's big argument for his reelection? Well, anybody who watched his campaign speech basically yesterday will say, well, on the world stage, everybody thinks we're ineffectual. We're not to be respected. They're getting away with everything they want to get away with. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think that's something that they would like to invest in keeping going? Don't you think that's something that powerful forces around the world would love to invest in keeping going? The status quo. Now, here's the part that everybody has missed about this statement. They love to laugh at Kamala Harris about some of her very kind of cryptic uh, word salad style statements. Think about this statement critically, critically for one minute. We see what can be, comma, unburdened by, comma, what has been. Now, basically, it's a very odd way of saying that when we let go of the past, when we let go of things that are holding us back, we have the ability to see a new future, a more hopeful future, uh, maybe a future we couldn't even imagine. Now, that's a very simple statement. A lot of people are like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, people make mistakes and people are who they are and then... You know, sometimes they have these moments, these Zen moments where they see that they're on the wrong path and then they make a change and then they unburden themselves of all the mistakes they've made 
and they go forward and it's, you know, a great turning point in their lives. And there's a dozen, I'm just going to quote three. If you can't let go of the, the past, the mistakes she made will eat you alive. There's thousands of comments like this. I'm just going to do three. For it is in letting go of the past that you reclaim your power. Step through the gateway now, Ralph Bloom. The prior one was Stephen K- uh, Stephen King, pardon me. And this third one, I don't know who K.E. Ganshirt is, but the past is the past. It's done. It's over. It only has power if you let it keep you from making the right choice in the present. Now. Now do Donald Trump. See, Donald Trump, this is the worst news he could have gotten this morning. He has spent the last three and a half years, and the year before that, completely running against the idea of Joe Biden. Everything Joe Biden did, Joe Biden's past before he was president, you know, VP of Obama, all this stuff. And that's been his entire shtick. Trump's entire point was, we have to let Biden, we have to let the ideas of Biden go. We have to have somebody else other than, but well, guess what? Biden just said, that's it, fine. And you're guaranteed after November, it won't be me. It won't be me. Now to older folks like, you know, Gen X and uh, you know, the boomer generation, we see the very stark uh, contrasts between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, not only in their mental faculties, but also, more importantly, in their philosophical beliefs going forward. But younger voters, younger voters do not. There was a huge group of voters that were not going to vote. They were not going to participate in the 2024 election cycle because for them, all they saw was two old men, two old white men. That's all they saw, two old white boomers, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. That's all they saw. Everything else was eh, eh, no, but guess what? Guess what? Now with, guess who? Now with a young, female, person of color, pro-gay option, you watch. You watch how fast the money rolls in to support her. I know what the opinion of Donald Trump supporters are. I know what the opinion of most of Gen X is. I know what the opinion of the vast majority of boomers are. But make no mistake, it's already started. The Clintons, they didn't waste five seconds. Five seconds in endorsing Kamala Harris because they know. They know the money is coming. Say what you want about these people. You can call them evil and terrible and horrible. They're smart. They're both incredibly smart people. Moral? Me? That's never been something that held people back from Trump. But believe this, well, we need somebody who's smart. And, you know, morality aside, okay. Say what you want about Hillary. Say what you want about Bill. And this is the other thing, too. There's a lot of people out there who have said, well, you know, Big Mike, Michelle Obama, Big Mike, Michelle Obama. A lot of people don't realize that Kamala Harris and Barry Sotero, Barack Obama, get along famously. Absolutely great buddies. But Big Mike, Michelle, Big Mike, and Kamala do not get along at all. They don't like each other. Not one bit. So there's actually a split because Michelle Obama's name wasn't Obama. Big shock there. It's a married name. But she's just as much of a narcissist as Barack is. See, everybody would just call her, you know, Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama, focusing on this guy's last name and not her. And this person who got the VP nod was kind of a slap in the face. And believe me, this is Donald J. Trump on YouTube. Already on it like white on rice. Already on it. Kamala was in on the cover-up of Joe Biden's health. See, they're, they're already trying to still stick Obama in this. Or, pardon me, stick Biden in this. But believe me, now that he's out, now that he's not going to be the... the uh, well, he is going to be the bridge, isn't he? Like he promised. He is going to have been the bridge. They're going to paint this guy to be a hero who worked right up until his very last breathing moments 
to even when his mind was going, he still stood in there and 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 was that bridge. He's you know who he's like? He's like Hodor. Remember remember Hodor from the Game of Thrones? The giant, the big giant that held the door, held the demons back? He's the Hodor of the Democrat Party. Go back and watch Game of Thrones. And uh, the character, the giant Hodor. He's the Hodor of the Democrat Party. He held them off just long enough, just long enough for them to escape. Now, here's something that's going to kind of blow your mind. Trump is not going to be able to run against this idea. Wait, wait, Mucky, what are you talking about? How is Trump not going to be able to write? What do you, how is he? Think about the idea. Think about the idea that says we can, pardon me, we see what can be unburdened by what has been. That could have been a Trump re-election campaign slogan. What, what are you talking about? Remember, Trump was a Democrat. Trump at one time loathed the concept of cryptocurrency. Trump says he'll be the first crypto president. But what will it mean for, for Bitcoin? Him and J.D. Vance are both um, big Bitcoin uh, proponents now. But at one time, they weren't. In 2021, quote, it just seems like a scam, Trump said. I don't like it because it's another currency competing against the dollar. The currency of this world should be the currency of this world. The currency of this world should be the dollar. And I don't think we should have all of the Bitcoins of the world out there. Less than three years later, Trump is now pitching himself as the crypto president. Trump, Trump weighing Bitcoin hater Jamie Dian, Diamond for U.S. Treasury. For those of you that think that I'm making this up, even before that statement from 11 July 2019, we have Donald Trump. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money, and whose value is highly volatile and based on Thin air, unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Going on to say, we only have one real currency in the USA, and it is stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. It is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. It is called the United States dollar. So that was Trump on crypto. But now, of course, he's pro-super crypto now, so he is what? He is now unburdened. Let's see if I can get this quote right, this word salad quote right. He has now seen what can be unburdened by what has been. Unburdened by what has been. See, every time I said, shouldn't we be looking into Trump's past? Should we really be trusting what Trump says based on how many years he was in the Democrat Party and being friends with the Clintons? You can't burden Trump with his past. You can't burden Trump. He has seen... Oh, so he's unburdened. He is unburdened now. He has now seen what can be unburdened by his past. I love this picture. This is actually him in his own words. Hillary Clinton, Don Jr., Eric and me, the first lady, is a wonderful woman who has handled pressure incredibly well. This is, of course, during the Clinton administration. Oh, and let's not forget about uh, COVID and the vaccine. See, there was one story back then about the vaccine and his role in it, an Operation Warp Speed. But then, since then, he's had to try to reinvent himself. And don't get me, I'm not going to go over this thing with his vice president. Again, we did a whole video based on it. Should he uh, be unburdened by what has been? Should J.D. Vance be able to now see what can be unburdened by what has been literally for him five minutes ago? I wonder what the story about Ron DeSantis would have been if there had been some lavish state dinner with him and his wife and the leader of China. Or if Ron DeSantis had said, Hezbollah is very smart, uh, the Chinese president is also very smart, um, genius and savvy, Russian president, great leader, Kim Jong-un, you know, whatever, Hong or one of them. And hey, all you guys out there with the guns know what I'm talking about. 
10, 9, 10, 19, 16, Second Amendment under attack. Constitution must be upheld. Take the guns first. Go through due process second. 2018. Ban bump stocks. Raise the gun age to 21. Background checks. Remember this? A lot of people forgot this. A lot of people forgot about Trump wanting to uh, let people use whatever bathroom they want. You can look that up. See, before that became super unpopular with a lot of people whose votes he needed, he, you know, he had a different tune. And don't get me started on his uh, falling into bed with a gay agenda. Or BLM. Who remembers this? Trump derides, they burned down this and they burned down that and no criminal prosecutions for any of BLM. Spoke with Mark Fisher yesterday. A great guy, very honored to have his and BLM's support. I have done more for... but. Still want to keep going? Still want to keep going about Trump being a friend of Zion? I have no problem with this, but I know a lot of a lot of his voters do. Trump's not a globalist, though. Trump's not a globalist. Trump's not a globalist? I don't really know exactly what the hell was going on here, but it looks awful globalist to me. I mean, King of England. Oh, here's another one of my favorites. Here's another one of my favorites. This is February 21, 2019. I want 5G and even 6G technology in the United States as soon as possible. Far more powerful, faster, smarter than the current standard. American companies must step up their efforts or get left behind. There's no reason that we should be lagging behind. Council on Foreign Relations. Who remembers when George H.W. Sr. died? Bush. And everybody derided me for making a, a video. He was president when I was in the military. George H.W. was. He was president. He was my commander-in-chief. He was in my chain of command as commander-in-chief when I was in the military. And so I did a video saying that, you know, Godspeed, you know, like the Bible says we pray for even those who are my enemies. I didn't see George H.W. Bush as my enemy. But even if he was, doesn't our Bible tell us to pray for them? I mean, we can we can do the greatest hits all day long. And let me guess, why, why are we talking about this again, Florida? I forgot why we were talking about it. Well, it's real simple. You see, Donald Trump has seen what can be unburdened by what has been in his past. Donald Trump and his supporters see what can be unburdened by what has been in Donald Trump's past. Which is exactly what Kamala Harris is running on. Which is why Donald Trump can't run against it. And yes, this is not photoshopped. Yes, that's Kathy Griffin. Big old smiles. Arms around. Donald Trump, when he was, of course, a Democrat. It just goes on and on and on and on. And I do think it is very, very strange how this has all turned out now. Make no mistake, do not be fooled. There is going to be a, I mean, an absolute mountain sized wave of money that is going to pour in to the coffers backing her. I mean, the idea. The, the idea of getting her on the ticket with Biden was one thing. But now, only four short years later, putting a, a young woman of color, you know, from a di completely different era, a young woman of color, Democrat, on literally into the presidency. See, the, the, this, there's identity politics. And then there's identity politics on steroids. There is, there is no, no thing they will not do to make this happen. And the best thing for them right now is the fact that there's only a matter of months. There's only a matter of months now between this event and when people are going to vote. It isn't going to matter to a lot. And like I said, I know there's a lot of people already typing about you know, their beliefs, and I can tell I can tell by what you type how old you are. I can tell exactly what what your age is, well, within 10 years, by what you type. Because you believe 
a whole other group of other voters that are way younger, pardon me, way younger than you, are going to see things the same way you do. There are going to be a bunch of women that say, the first time a woman led a ticket, I voted for her. The first time a woman led a, led a ticket, I voted for her. A black woman leading a ticket, I voted for her. A black woman of my era, or person of color, female from my era, not some old white boomer, I'm going to vote for that person. More importantly, I'm going to vote against Trump. More importantly, I'm going to vote against Trump. You see, vote against Trump is back. Vote against Trump is back. See, before, before what just happened today, voting against Trump just meant voting for another old white guy. Voting against Trump just meant voting for another old white guy. That you could make the allegation based on where they came from that they were both just as quote-unquote racist, just as xenophobic, just as anti-woman, just as um, hard-headed Archie Bunker. You could see they just had, you know, little different flavors of where they came from. They were both just a couple of white guys. Well, guess what? That's done. That's done. Believe me. And these people are smart enough to see it. These people are smart enough to see it. And I want you to soak this up real quick. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it, not feel. I mean, I know what all the arguments are for voting for President Trump. I've heard them all. I've watched all of the rallies. I know what he's saying. I get it. But perception is reality. Perception is reality. This changes everything. They are not going to hold Afghanistan, the botched withdrawal, against Kamala Harris. Even though she was the quote-unquote border czar, it was Joe Biden's executive orders that dumped the shit sandwich on her plate in a quote-unquote unfixable problem. And believe me, there are going to be a lot of black women out there who are going to say, you know, yeah, I've, you know, I've had to work for white men that you know, gave me positions of power, but created circumstances where I was destined to fail. There's actually, I shouldn't say a lot of black women, there's a lot of black people out there. They're going to say, that, yeah, yeah, white people do this. They, 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 they say they give you power. They say they give you authority, but then they create situations where you're just destined to fail. She'll be able to sell that. She'll be, she'll be able to sell Biden having been the problem and that we need to be unburdened by what has been. We need to be unburdened by what has been and focus on what's the most important thing. Defeating Trump. What's the most important thing? Defeating Trump. We need to focus on that. Not what Biden did or didn't do. Not the coulda, shoulda, woulda. They're going to brag about, if, if Trump was talking about money, they're going to talk. They're going to point right to the stock market. They're talking about how high the stock market is. Remember when I was talking about uh, Trump and Bitcoin, where he was, you know, deriding Bitcoin and saying, you know, the very, very powerful dollar should be the only currency in the world. The very, very powerful dollar should be the only currency in the world. Do you know how powerful the U.S. dollar is right now compared to what it was when he was in? The, the dollar has, is actually destroying other currencies right now. It's the most coveted currency in the world. That's actually why a lot of people are flooding the border because a dollar to you and me is one thing, but a dollar to them back home, remittances, a dollar to them back home is worth way, 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 way more in the context of their own home currencies. Make no mistake, this, this is more than an earthquake. This is more than a hurricane. This is a global tsunami. A global tsunami of money is about to roll in. And you're going to see something that is going to absolutely, you're going to wonder, what the hell is Donald Trump doing? Why is Trump still talking about Biden? Why is Trump still talking about Biden? Why is Trump still talking about Biden's past? What's going on? 
See, Trump's been running unopposed. Trump has been running unopposed. There are people that are going to get in the game now. There are people that are going to get in the game, and it's late in the game, and I'm sorry, but Trump's team has had it easy. Trump's team has had it easy picking on Biden. Biden literally created the commercials for them. It's like the it's like the football team. It's like the football team that during the regular season plays nothing but uh, snowflakes, snowflake teams, easy teams, pushover teams, and the starters are out by the end of the first half. And it's all second and third stringers by the fourth quarter. You know, just getting their reps in. Well, guess what? Donald Trump is now in the playoffs, and he's going to have to face a team. Now that's, you know, not going to be quite that easy. Make no mistake, I'm going to call it right here. I know I've been promising you guys a video. I'm going to get it up. I am going to get it up. Things have just been changing so fast that I have to really think and be very uh, pensive about the direction we go with the PSYOPs channel. And that's really what it is. It's Psychological Operations 101. You have to think many moves ahead. Many, many moves ahead. So I will leave it there. But once again, let me just cover this. We see what can be potential unburdened by what has been past mistakes. Potential unburdened by past mistakes. That's basically what's being said here. And you go right through Trump's history. It has been the unspoken thing. No matter what Trump did in the past, there was always an army of people saying, we need to unburden him of his past. We need to unburden him of all of his statements. Unburden him of all of his mistakes. Unburden him of all of the things that he did that were directly contradictory to what he said he was going to do. Think about it, especially with the vaccine, Hillary Clinton. And the thing with Bitcoin is part because it's it's right now. Trump has set it is set to head to uh, uh, the the Bitcoin conference in Nashville next weekend. Twenty five uh, July twenty five through twenty seven. That's uh, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. So I will leave it there. Um, Kamala Harris, the heir apparent, a different era, a different gender, a different color. And if she's smart enough to pick pick Pete Buttigieg, I know it's 28 minutes in. If she's smart enough to pick Pete Buttigieg, a gay man, an open out gay man, ex-military. Think about, I, I just don't like Trump's chances against it. And it doesn't have anything to do with what Trump says he is really going to do. It's about identity politics. So, I will leave it there. God bless. Join us the Patreon channel. Love to have you. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.